Hello, welcome to another installment of the Universal Jar Handle product development process. I'm doing this to demonstrate the various stages in product development uh, using a real life example of the Universal Jar Handle, which is a product I'm working on, been working on for some time. So uh, the idea here is that we're going to be showing the steps in the product development process all the way from uh, basically concept to cash flow and going through all the steps along the way everything from 3d model to monetization we've covered some 3d printing and prototyping methods already and now we're going into production and we're verifying these pre-production samples today so we're just gonna open this up here see what our, our manufacturer has sent to us supposedly the color samples. Got our samples here. So I got our orange. Looking pretty good. Pretty excited about that. Got our blue, yellow. So these are the four colors we'll be working with. So I just got to verify that these are matching here. Looks pretty good so far, to be honest. Like black, yes, quite good. Yellow, which I'm pretty excited about, yes. I think that's pretty good. The orange, quite good as well. Done quite a good job on that, I think. Just do a quick demo here of an installation. I think really my favorite at the moment is the yellow because it's very bright, very colorful. One of the reasons I pushed for doing the colors was that uh, you know we're going to use these bright colors for marketing purposes. Install those there like that. Now, given that this is a, a universal jar handle, we can install it on any jar. This was an old pickle jar that I had, and uh, rather than throw it in the bin, we'll install our little handle here. So, essentially, just go like so. that. You always want to pull these as tight as you can. You can make sure that it's good and tight. Yeah. And then common scissors. Just trim that like that. Snip, snip. There you go. You've got yourself a jar handle mug with lid. Not too shabby. In general, I'm quite happy with the, this result and I'm prepared to go to the manufacturer and say basically go ahead with the production. My first production is quite small on this product, 2,500 units. And for that reason, I'm paying a slight premium on the uh, per unit cost. Say I was producing 5,000 or 10,000 units of this product, then the manufacturing costs would come down naturally. But I'm testing the waters and I'm trying not to invest too much money until I, I'm sure that we can turn a profit with it. So. Essentially, that's the next step. Go into production, I'm gonna receive those 2,500 units, and in the meantime, I'm gonna be working on the product packaging 
and some more of the branding development, uh, trying to find a proper product name which can be trademarked um, for protection purposes. That's one thing we'll cover in a future lesson. And yeah, there's a lot to do, but again, we're using this as a, a teaching tool and uh, eventually we'll hopefully uh, make some money. We've gone in the early stages, if you've caught those lessons, we were sure to do some calculations on the costs of goods and, that will be required to make this and distribute this product. So relatively confident about its ability to turn a profit or at least recoup its expenses. Next step will be set up for the sales channel and distribution, product fulfillment. Ideally, we won't be shipping one by one because again, I'm trying to take my hands off and not spend my life shipping products. I'm trying to create a business that develops products and either licenses them or uses uh, fulfillment centers to ship the products out and keep relatively hands off that process. Now, um, licensing, it's a very big buzzword these days. Uh, it's probably the best path to profitability for an independent inventor or independent product developer to come up with concepts for new products, viable ideas, and create some intellectual property or simply create marketing materials for those ideas and take them to companies. Uh, in this case, proving the product out and proving demand by first selling the jar handle online and developing the trademark name that you know, makes sense, it's, it's a solid product. Uh, the more you can prove to a manufacturer that this idea makes money, the more likely they'll be to take it on and take the risk of producing the product, stocking the product, fulfilling the product. And so really we're not wasting time here developing it a little bit. You know, you have to invest in, in time and you have to invest in developing the, your intellectual property. Now what we have in this case is the, the mold shape and we have, we'll have the trademark name, we'll have the specific geometry of how this interacts with the jar itself. There's uh, some patent drafted on that that I've got. So, you know, we're learning about this whole process. Again, I encourage you to go back and watch some of the previous episodes of this development case study. Anyway, we are getting there and it's an exciting time. So I'm glad to have you along for the journey. Feel free to submit any questions you have related to this product or your own project. Uh, more than happy to have consultations with anyone who's interested in product development or has an idea who could use some free advice. I'm always willing to have a chat. So that's it. Bye for now. I hope to see you in the future.